2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Continuing on with where we were a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago we saw Timothy's warning from the Apostle Paul and Timothy's exhortation. And 2 Timothy is an exhortation where the Apostle Paul is giving him instructions, warnings, and helps in order to keep Timothy on the right track. Last thing we saw in this text was that the believers in Ephesus had turned away from Paul. And that's consistent with what we see in the rest of the epistles in Paul's letters. The believers at Corinth had turned away from Paul. And uh, the believers at Philippi, uh, many of them had turned against Paul, were preaching Christ out of envy and strife and contention, supposing to add affliction to his bonds. And Paul is, uh, in, in some ways, a little bit jaded here. He got a little bit of a reality check about the brethren, about the fact that people who love God don't always love the brethren. Boy, that's one of the signs of loving of loving God. You know, people who are God's children are supposed to love one another. Uh, you know, before Jesus went to the cross, before He promised that in His Father's house are many mansions, in John chapter 13, He said, A new commandment I give you. Love one another. Paul wasn't feeling it. Many of the individuals were saying that Paul was in prison because of his own misdeeds or because of the way that he mishandled the gospel. He would argue, you didn't have to preach the gospel there, Paul. You didn't have to stand up and say something. You didn't have to go to Jerusalem. And yet, who was it that constrained Paul to go to Jerusalem? Over and again, he said, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And we know that when Paul was saved, it was understood that he was saved to preach the gospel to the Gentiles and to Rome. I mean, he was saved for that purpose. And so here he is at Rome, and he's letting them know, the believers know, that he's not only appointed an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles, but he's supposed to preach in Rome. And he said that in Philippians. Go to chapter 2 of 2 Timothy tonight. And I want to look at uh, a word that is uh, used in two different forms, but similar word in chapter 2, verse 8, and then we'll read down to verse 14. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. What a verse to memorize. That's a great one. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, period. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. If we believe not yet, He abideth faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Father, I pray that You would help us as we look at the Scripture this evening, to see the importance of remembering key truths. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember. Remember. Verse 8. Remember. 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 You ever been reminded about something or had someone remind you? It's nice to have people around you. It's one of the things about not being surrounded by people. A lot of times you don't have anyone to remind you about anything. Uh, I... I uh, call on Anthony a lot, don't I, Anthony? Anthony, remind me. Uh, last Sunday evening on the way home from church, we were dropping off Miss Amon over in Margate, and I told Anthony, remind me, after we drop off Miss Amon, uh, that we could stop by Popeye's and get some uh, Popeye's chicken. Guess what, Anthony? The second Amon got out of the truck, hey, we got to remember to go buy Popeye's. <laughs> uh, I have noticed that food-related uh, topics trigger some kind of um, special response for memory with certain people. Uh, and uh, Anthony's one of those. 
if, if I want to remember something, all I have to do is combine it with food and then tell it to Anthony, and I'll get it. You know, you ever get right, Anthony? I can trust him for that. You know, it's bad when you can't remember things, isn't it? You ever gone somewhere for an express purpose and then gotten sidetracked on the way and then not actually even done what you initially set out to do? If I could remember, I could probably give you a lot of instances of having done that. <laughs> I know I have, but I can't remember them specifically. A lot of times my wife will say, did you remember to get what I've, you know, and, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes I'll be on my way somewhere and she'll call and say, oh, on your way, where are you at? That's always a loaded question. When you ask, where are you at? And then on your way home or... Uh, if you go by there, could you? And I'm always like, if I can remember. If I can remember. Now, I do have this thing that works, but I forget about it. Uh, okay, Google, remind me. And it'll set reminders and give you an alarm if, if, it, if it hears you right. And I do, use, I do use the Antichrist every now and again to my, uh, to my benefit. Uh, I don't think Google's the Antichrist, but it certainly is tracking everything about everybody. And when I leave, they're going to have a lot of good information. Now we lay on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the reality of it is, uh, <laughs> okay, Google, remind me, and it'll set a reminder, and it'll 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 uh, tell me something that it, I'm just afraid I'm not going to remember. Can't remember everything, can you? Some people have things that are wrong with their brains. And it makes it so they can seem to remember everything. But the things they remember are uh, not significant, you know. Uh, there's a guy at Delray Beach that remembers like every date. He can tell you something on every date. No kidding. Uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Robert? I can't remember. Uh, and Bob, something like that. There's a guy. He was there last night. And he has a very unique personality. And uh, there's something fidgety with his brain where he can remember obscure facts. Facts facts, obscure facts. Uh, you can give him uh, a car, for instance, and he can tell you all the different renditions of the car, the model year changes, and all kinds of things like that, where guys that are, uh, you know, aficionados, or how you pronounce that word, uh, would maybe know, but he's to the extreme of it. Like, he just, if he knows something one time, he just always remembers it. Now, he doesn't concern himself with everyday routine useful facts, uh, but he does have a remarkable remember, remembrance or ability to recall or remember things. It's like a, just like a computer. It's amazing how that works for some people. Um, some people can remember trivia. Some people can remember minutia. Uh, you know, it's important to remember things that matter, though. And <laughs> Paul, the Apostle Paul, if you've ever diagrammed his sentences, if you've ever taken a sentence of the Apostle Paul, you realize he can go like two or three chapters and not hit a period. And this is sort of one of those statements, but a colon is kind of a stopping point where information behind it elaborates further. And that's what we have in verse 8. What we have in verse 8, a very, very terse, important statement that Paul makes. He said, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Now, I guess that's a pretty long sentence, but if you diagram it, it's remember Jesus, specifically the son of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel. Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Let's say that. Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So we can kind of say it in a rhythm of three phrases. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. That's probably four phrases, but uh, who's counting? You are, not me. So, <laughs> uh, remember... Now, Paul's writing a letter to Timothy, and he's telling him a lot of things, but implied and remember is don't forget. In other words, a lot of what's said is forgotten, isn't it? 
Some things trigger memory. I have been remembering things that happened a long time ago, and I've been surprised by it. Like, and things trigger it. I, we were at West Park Baptist Church Friday and Saturday, and I spent a lot of time there. Melissa spent a lot of time there. And I was standing with Pastor McClure by the back gate of the, where the pool's at, and by the tennis courts, everybody's playing out there, and there's a green spot. Round green spot right there. And Pastor uh, told Brother Brent Gellis, he said, that's where Pastor Price used to uh, used to uh, do pig pit barbecues. Right there. You know, and then we looked at something else. So that's where something else happened. I remembered all kinds of things. On a regular daily basis, that really doesn't occur to me. I don't remember things. And then we remembered how he had a pig run away and never come back. And he used to show up in neighborhoods and so forth. We were going to have a pig chase with the teenagers for an activity, and we got a wild pig on purpose. Not not wild, wild pig, but a pig that was contrary by nature. And <laughs> one of the two of the teenage boys showed up just as he was breaking the gate down and getting out. And that pig ran, ran took off running, and Sean McClure, who was fast, and Greg, who were, they were both in good shape, they were athletic, they started chasing him, and they chased him about a half an hour until the pig just flat out outran them, just left them behind. And the next Monday morning, I was visiting a lady in the hospital, and she said, you know the funniest thing? She said, my nurse told me the funniest story. She's like, you'll think this is interesting because she lives in the neighborhood by the church. And I said, what's that? She said, uh, she said she got up in the morning and there was this little black pig rooting in her lawn. I said, that's the funniest thing. That's amazing. And for the next three or four years, pig sightings happened all over that neighborhood and we never could catch that rascal you'd see him like run into the run into the thickets and until pastor mcclure said they developed a particular area uh there were pigs i forgot all about that i got a lot of stories i have a lifetime of stories if i could remember i could write books of humorous anecdotes of funny things that i've seen or done or that have happened and i've been around some funny people i write stories about funny people I know lots of funny people. I could, if you guys weren't around, I'm waiting for you to die so I can write about you, <laughs> actually. But, uh, you know, uh, humorous anecdotes. I can just tell funny thing, people stories. Uh, I, man, anyway. But I don't remember everything. And the reason I don't always remember everything is everything isn't always important. There are some things, though, on a continual daily basis I do remember. I remember to get out of bed every morning. That may seem funny to you, but it's pretty vital for me. Uh, you ever been so tired when you go to bed at night and you ever slept so hard that you have to wake up in the morning and figure out who you are, where you're at, and where you're supposed to be? You, I mean, when you, if you if you work hard, I mean, you really put in a hard day's work, and you're really tired, when you go to sleep, you'll fall asleep. And uh, now some people cannot sleep at all. They don't have the physical ability. I'm talking about, you know, humans. And when you fall asleep, you can. When you wake up, you just be like, "Who am I?" And trying to figure out where am I, and uh oh, am I late to something? Where am I supposed to be? And it's good to remember that. I remember to get up in the morning. It's pretty useful. I remember hygienic things. Uh, thankfully, uh, some. Never mind. I won't say anything. I I remember important things. I remember to shower. I remember to dress. There are some basic things that I remember to do. I almost always remember my identification when I leave to go places. I don't ever really need it, but I always, I don't know, I guess I, I somebody convinced me sometime I need to carry it with me. In case I get killed, they can call my wife. So I carry identification. Uh, and I remember that. Um, there are things I wish I could forget. I remember to eat. I, had some, there, I have some natural impulses and urges that bring that up. But I remember to eat, as you well can uh, tell, I'm certain. Paul is telling Timothy here about some doctrinal things, some basic doctrinal things. And the hope or the purpose of what Paul is saying is he wants him to remember some things that matter. And he said, remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And that was the problem in the church. 
false teachers were coming in and they were teaching another gospel. It was a more complicated gospel. Sometimes it was a gospel of Judaism where you had to be circumcised, you had to keep the law, and you had to, you had to, and you had to. It was a gospel which was not by faith. Sometimes it was a gospel of works. That would be the Judaism type. It would be, this is what you do in order to be saved, in order to merit worth or works or salvation. You have to do these things. And Paul said to Timothy, in order to be effective, in order to be a good soldier, remember the simplicity of the Gospel. That Jesus Christ of the seed of the David was raised from the dead according to my Gospel. He said, remember the Gospel I preached. When Paul would write letters to churches warning them about false teachers, the warning was also they're preaching a different Gospel. There are three places in the Bible that I prefer to share the Gospel from. Really two, but this would be a third. The first is John 3. John 3. No one knows the Gospel better than Jesus, and people that change or subvert or teach another Gospel always preach it from anywhere but John 3. And when you remind them about John 3, they tell you, yes, 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 pat you on the head, but, and then they add all kinds of things from texts that aren't talking about the Gospel. But John 3, Jesus explaining how to be born again, how to see the Kingdom of God. That's the Gospel. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's right after He said the Son of Man must be lifted up, the death on the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul wrote that the Gospel was that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead according to, or that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and was buried and He rose again. And here Paul speaks it even more simply. He said the Gospel is that Jesus Christ is risen, was raised from the dead. It's interesting as Paul matured, the presentation of the Gospel that he gave and reminded us about is more and more condensed. Why is that? Because the Gospel is simple and Paul wanted Timothy to remember that. I wanted Timothy to remember that. Listen to me tonight, Christian. You may say, Pastor, I'd like a profound message. I'm sorry, you're not getting it from me, and you're not getting it here tonight. But I want to tell you something. The Gospel's simple. It's easy to be saved. Remember that. The Gospel's not convoluted, it's not complex, and it is not complicated. It's simple. Jesus Christ, the Son of David, was raised from the dead. It's important the son of David part, because the implication of that is that he fulfilled all the prophecy. All the prophecy about the Messiah. There's a fellow over in Russia that literally 5,000 people follow. That's a lot of people considering the lunacy of it. He's an ex-police officer in uh, way north Siberia, in a beautiful place, and people have a pilgrimage every year to go see him, and there's literally a village of worshipers that follow him. He's not of the seed of David. And he's not been raised from the dead. And his gospel, whatever the message of it is, is, you know, positive uh, words and so forth. But he's not qualified to be a Savior. But the gospel is that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. You got that? So the gospel is what? Simple. The gospel's simple. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. I think sometimes we as believers have a problem with a simple gospel. I shouldn't say sometimes. Try to present the gospel simply and see all of the lunatic believers who want to complicate it. They just jump on, oh, but you got it. Well, Pastor Price, when you preached the gospel, all you preached was that Jesus was the Son of God and that He died for our sins. According to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again. That's all. You know, and that all you got to do is call the name of the Lord to be saved. Well, there's more than, to the Gospel than that. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. Well, you know, so you have to be sincere. Well, who in the world calls the name of the Lord and isn't sincere? 
Right? I want to be saved, but I don't. Really. That's nonsense. If you don't really, you're not calling on the name of the Lord. But that's dumb. We don't need we don't need to discuss that, do we? Do we have to discuss all the nonsensical hypotheticals? I'm not talking about the people that are faking call on the name of the Lord. I'm talking about how to be saved. Call on the name of the Lord. It's that simple. It's fascinating that in a short letter, like Paul wrote to Timothy, it's fascinating that when he said, remember, as in do not forget, call to the remembrance, don't forget this, that he gives him a terse, simple sentence, which is a synopsis of the gospel, and says, don't forget it. You know, Christians know all kinds of things. And talk about this, and talk about that, and argue this, you know, this, this, these things, that things. Listen, you don't know the gospel, you don't know anything worth knowing. You know all kinds of things. If you don't know the gospel, it's simple. You don't know anything worth knowing. All the rest of the things you know, might as well forget it. Because you don't remember the main thing. <laughs> Whenever I'm working on a project, and I have to go to either the tool place or the supplies place. Most projects I work on either have to do with carpentry tools or mechanical tools. I either have to get a tool or something in particular, or maybe some hardware, or I need, yeah, supplies, some hardware supplies or lumber or something like that. It's really frustrating when I go to get something and then I, you know, get some things that support it, but I forget the main thing that I went for. Screws don't do you much good without wood. I've got the screws. Did you remember the two by fours? Uh, We've got all this minutiae, all the hardware, all the add-ons to Christianity, you know, to the quote faith. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm not even being sarcastic about that. Uh, Second Peter talks about the light, precious faith. It talks about adding to our faith. That's a good reference to what we have when we've believed in Christ Jesus and the things that we add on. But friend, the basics, the foundational beliefs of a of a Christian are what we ought to remember. It ought to be the thing that just always comes to the forefront. Paul qualifies the gospel by saying, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. So there's some auxiliary or ancillary information. I'm bound because of the gospel, but the word of God isn't. Remember that. He said, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. You know, this is not a complicated uh, verse, verse 10. The word elect is, is not a problem word. It means elect. It means chosen. And uh, it's a reference to the church. Just a general reference. Anytime you see it, the elder unto the elect lady, the word elect is a reference to the church. And the church is comprised with people who have been saved. And Jesus' bride was elect, if you will. It's not implying that individuals were, you know, without a will, without a choice, by a sovereign God. God's sovereign. But God in His sovereignty gives man a will, gives man a choice. And does the word elect doesn't eliminate words like faith or believe or trust. Those are words of the will, of man's will. It's, it's just ludicrous that the existence of one word in the Scripture, individuals would think forego or eliminates the, a plethora of other words. The elect is just a reference to the church here. And Paul said, I'm doing this for the sake of the church. I, I'm, I'm a laughing stock, as he said in other places. Um, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. <laughs> it's a faithful saying, for if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. If we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Verse 14, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Alright, remember, 
And Paul makes a simple statement. He qualifies the simple statement with a string or a series of statements about the persecution that he's enduring, the profit of the persecution. Uh, if we're dead with him, we live with him. I can die for Jesus because I'm, I'm alive with Jesus. I'm not going to be touched by the second death as John is told by, by Jesus in the Revelation. If we believe not, he bideth faithful. God's always faithful. My belief does not precipitate uh, truth or does not affect truth. Isn't it incredible but actually common that individuals think that they're not believing in Jesus makes Him somehow non-existent? It's really uh, a little bit silly, but it, it, it actually is very, very commonplace. There are a lot of people that think that not acknowledging that Jesus is God or that Jesus is the only way for eternal life makes them somehow valid in their unbelief by just not acknowledging it. For instance, uh, Luke, were you, were you my visitation partner last week? You were, weren't you? Yeah, you were. Was it, was it last week? No, it was another time. Luke and I were knocking on doors and a guy basically said he didn't want to talk about Jesus. And we had one guy do that this week, but he said he didn't want to talk about Jesus. So why not? I don't want to talk about it. And if you carried on the conversation a little bit, you'd realize he didn't want to deal with it. He just didn't want to deal with it. And he thinks that somehow not dealing with it will make it go away. How many of you have seen someone who thinks that not dealing with the problem makes it go away? <laughs> yeah. And there are a lot of people that think that just not acknowledging that Jesus is the Christ and that He's the only way for salvation will be some kind of a validation when they fall before God in the day of judgment. Friend, it will not be. It won't work. We've had, some of us have had reality checks in life, haven't we? It's okay. You know what? My not dealing with it doesn't make it go away. It's still there. So you might as well deal with it sooner than later. Might as well come to, to head or to face of it. Jesus is faithful. You can deny Him, but He cannot deny Himself. That's who He is. And Timothy is told to remind the church of this. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Now, who is the them? Who is the them in this situation? Well, if you keep going back in your context and going back and back and back until you can find out uh, who the them is, you'll see it in verse 2. Let's look at verse 2 and we'll be finished this evening. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Who's the them that Timothy is told not only to remember this, but to put others in remembrance of? Who? What? Other men. Other men. Which men? Faithful men. Faithful men. And Timothy's told to remember the simple things and remind, <coughs> remind faithful men of the simple things. I like to think that the Sunday night crowd is the faithful crowd. The, the folks that are pretty well committed. You know, they're, they're here because they see the value in gathering it for the fellowship with the saints and for the hearing of the preaching of the Word of God. And I like to think that they're the ones that, you know, they're the faithful crowd. And Timothy says, tell the faithful people to remember these things. Pastor, it's pretty simple. Jesus Christ of the seed of David was uh, raised from the dead according to my gospel. Pretty simple. Don't forget it. It's important. It's so basic. It's so key. It's so vital 
to our understanding. That needs to be the thing we remember. You ever get distracted by things that don't matter? Get upset about things and you realize in the whole scheme of life, that doesn't matter? Most of the things that upset us in this past year are things that we actually can't even remember. I can't remember all the traffic incidents that were just stupid people driving. I hope people can't remember my driving. <laughs> can't remember all those things. Why? Because they really honestly don't matter. I can't remember all the times I couldn't find something and it irritated me. Or somebody got on my nerve. I just don't remember it. Why? Well, it didn't matter. And we spend a lot of time being affected, actually, not only in our temper and our mood, but we spend a lot of time being affected by things that aren't worth even remembering. Instead of being affected by the one thing that we shouldn't forget, and that's Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to Paul's Gospel. Paul said, remember the Gospel that I preached to you. Remember that. And you know, remembering that puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Somebody irritates me, and I remember God loves them and helps me with my perspective. You think, well, God loves them. If I don't love them, who's right here? God is. I better love them. God does. Jesus died for them. They matter. There are some hateful, conniving, manipulative, all-out pure evil people in this world and Jesus died for them. And when I hear what they say, and when I see what they do, my blood boils. But Jesus' blood flowed on the cross for the very same. Perspective. Perspective. There are believers that get in the Word of God and they study not to show themselves approved. They study so they can argue with other believers. Do they just study so they can bicker and argue and look down on and think people are wrong about instead of preach the gospel? You're spending time in the Scripture for any other purpose than to know the Gospel better so that you can preach it better. You're sidetracked. I'm not saying that all Scripture and everything in the Word of God is not important to know. I'm saying if you are sidetracked, if you're not remembering the simplicity of the Gospel, you've forgotten the only thing that really matters. You're sidetracked. You're off on a tangent. We've all done that, haven't we? We've gotten on a tangent, gone off on this or got off on that. I'm telling you the gospel, that's what it is. And Timothy is written to by Paul, who's in prison, who's going to be dead pretty soon. He knows it. And Paul said, remember, remember the, remember the gospel. Remember it right. Remember it simply. Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead. Pastor, he didn't even mention sin. Why did Jesus die? Isn't there an implication? It doesn't death imply sin? Does it? Yeah. Well, you ought to let people know how depraved they are. Well, unless they're delusional, that's a moot point, isn't it? Unless they're delusional. I've met delusional people. Christ being raised from the dead is meaningless because they're delusional about sin. But if the one doesn't mean anything, the other won't either. You see? And it's just boiled down. It's condensed. And it's effectively written. This is the most effective summary that Paul gives of the Gospel. In many instances, he gives the Gospel. Man, in Romans, he elaborates on the simplicity of faith and takes a lot of time talking about how simple it is. But here he simply states it. He could have been on Twitter.
and gotten the gospel across. Be a pretty good tweet, wouldn't it? Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Man, that would create some long responses. Wouldn't it? Don't forget it. Don't forget simplicity, folks. Don't get caught up. Don't get distracted by. Don't get led away. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Let's, let's just say it together. Let's see if we remember. Ready? Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And if you don't forget that, my friend, you'll have something solid and worth knowing. Uh, got to challenge you to memorize that. That'll be all right. Why don't you memorize that? That way you'll remember it. Father, thank you for what we've learned. I pray that you would help us to remember it. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.